Hey everybody, Cadillac Shrimpin here. I'm a rank 27 nation shipbuilder on UWO's Gamma server. Welcome to my introduction to shipbuilding guide. Shipbuilding is a pretty complex subject and I don't think I'll be able to cover everything in a single video, but this is part one and hopefully it will cover the basics. We've got a lot to cover, so let's go ahead and jump right into it. Okay, so you don't have to have the shipbuilding skill to be a successful UWO player. So why would you want it? Well, the primary advantage is going to be that you can completely customize any ship that you build. If you're the one that's building or modding a ship, you have complete creative control of that ship. It's like a blank canvas for you to paint. You get to pick your skills, your parts, and you get to establish which stats you want your mods to focus on. If you want to do something unconventional, like modding a battle rower to be a Namban trade ship, then go for it. Nobody can tell you that you can't. And most importantly, you're just not limited to those ships that are available on the market from other players. And I'll tell you a little secret. Usually those ships that are on the market are not the best ones in the game. Players tend to hang on to those when they get them. Also, if you build your own ships, you don't have to pay someone else to build it for you and the money that you save can really add up over the life of your character. And on the flip side of that, there's some potential for profit by building or selling ships to other players, particularly if you're a rank 20 shipbuilder and you're very good at designing ships. You've probably seen people shouting in Seville, Seville and World Chat, willing to hire a rank 20 shipbuilder, and there's definitely a lot of good easy money to be made in that. But probably the most important reason why you would want to build your own ships is that it's a lot of fun. And that's the whole reason we play this game. I'm usually much more attached to ships that I've built for myself than ones I've bought from other people. And you'll find out that while shipbuilding is in part a numbers and mathematics game, trying to balance the parts and figure out what the best parts are for that ship, there's also strategy and luck components involved as well. How well are your mods going to turn out? Maybe you'll get really lucky and get a lot of great successes. But what if you get a lot of fails? Then you have to adjust your plan and kind of think on your feet. And what ship skills are going to be best suited towards your purposes? Thinking about all these things together is what really makes shipbuilding a lot of fun for me. Let's talk about the shipbuilding skill. It's an auto effect skill, so it's not like an active skill where it consumes vigor upon use. The only requirements to get the skill are going to be rank 3 repair and level 7 combat. And once you have those, you can go over to the maritime guilds at Istanbul, Tunis, or Calcutta and pick it up. But that's not what I would recommend you to do. I would recommend that you have a expert job or a preferred job for the skill so that it ranks twice as fast as having it not in a preferred job. And the expert job for shipbuilding is going to be Shipwright. It's a very easy job quest to pull. You just go to the Lisbon Maritime Guild. You need to have Spanish and English. And you need to have rank 7 tactics or be fleeted with someone who does. That's the way I did it. And the quest itself is really easy. You just uh, go from capital to capital and talk to the naval officer who is outside of each of the Maritime Guilds. And once you're done, you come back to the Maritime Guild at Lisbon and pick up your job card. Let's talk about some of the requirements to build or mod ships in your port shipyard. First of all, you have to have the appropriate shipbuilding skill level to build that ship. Second of all, you have to have an investment in that port. Um, I'll talk about the shipbuilding skill here in just a minute, but let's talk about investments for a minute. I don't know what the exact amount is that you have to have invested in a port to build ships, and it may vary from port to port and nation to nation, but normally what I've done is around 2.5 mil, and I've never had any problems with it. Um, the only time I can think that might give you a problem with that amount would be if you're planning on defecting away from your nation. Now, um, if you defect away from your nation, all investments that you have made on behalf of that nation are cut in half. So, if you plan on defecting, you might want to invest more like 5 mil or so, um, just to make sure that you don't, when your investment gets cut in half, you still have enough to build in those areas.
while we're on the subject of investments, let's talk about territories for a second. A territory is a port that belongs to a nation and only members of that nation can invest there. An example would be the Spanish territory of Barcelona. Only Spanish players can invest in Barcelona under normal circumstances, but there are a couple of extenuating circumstances where you can invest in Barcelona. The first and probably most common way of doing that is going to be to defect to that nation and then invest in that territory. For in this example, let's say I'm an English player, normally I can't invest in Barcelona, but if I defected to Spain and then invested in Barcelona, then I would have an investment there and could build ships there and use town man recipes and all that kind of stuff there. Um, the other loophole is something that is related to the Epic Sea Feud. After an ESF, if I participated in that Epic Sea Feud and there was a um, fort bombardment that caused the city to fall, then I can invest in Barcelona for a very limited time. I think it's something like 24 to 48 hours. So if this happens and your side falls an enemy territory, that's uh, something that you really need to take advantage of. It only is open for a little while. So invest there while you can, even if you're not a shipbuilder, it's a good idea to go ahead and take advantage of that. All right, now it's time to talk about how to boost, what boosts can affect the shipbuilding skill. Um, well, the first and foremost is going to be the uh, job that you're in. In the shipwright job, that's the expert job for this, you get an automatic plus one to your shipbuilding skill. Now, keep in mind that maximum rank in the shipwright job is going to be rank 16. And now 16 plus one, that's only rank 17, and shipbuilding goes as high as rank 20. So how do you get the rest of those boosts? Well, the first way you're going to do that is by using some equipment. Um, the first thing that we'll mention is going to be the shipwright saw. That is a weapon. It's a plus one shipbuilding, plus one handicrafts. And keep in mind that this does degrade, and I've broken many of them on accident myself. Um, so normally what I recommend that you do is to equip your saw, go ahead and start your build or your mod, and then unequip it and go bank it. Um, the other thing is going to be the secrets of shipbuilding accessory. Now, it's an accessory and it has an effect, so that means it does not degrade, which is great. Um, the only way that this used to be available was by people who did a very, very difficult memorial album in order to get it. Uh, and it was very rare. I think prices were around 8 bill for a, a point in time. Um, then with the first sailor's bottle, they absolutely flooded the market with this. Um, I used about $20 worth of Astros on that first sailor's bottle, and I came out with three of them. So they, they were just all over the place. I was seeing them in bazaars all the time, and it was just, they were super cheap. Um, that's been two or three years ago, though, and the stock has gone down a lot since then. So um, now I think the latest uh, figure that I heard was around two bill for that. So let's go ahead and equip both of those. Those are both plus ones. And what that's going to do is that's going to boost us to rank 19, 16 plus 3 shipbuilding. And the way that you're going to get that last plus one is going to be through the use of an aid. There are certain aids, such as Chester here, that in the surgeon job will give a plus one shipbuilding. I chose Chester because he seems to get it a little bit earlier than most of the rest of the aides, and I would recommend you do the same if you're on an alt just for shipbuilding or don't want to grind out an aid forever. There is one other thing I would like to mention that you could boost, or two other things that I'd like to mention that you can boost your shipbuilding skill with. The first is going to be in the Astro shop, there is a piece of equipment called the Ruquin. I'm not sure how you say that word. Anyway, it's a plus one arms, plus one shipbuilding, plus three frugality garb. And that's a, an equipment also. A couple things about it, though. First of all, it's non-tradable. So if you buy it from the Astro shop, it's, it's, it's you. It's just stuck on you the entire time. 
It's also 699 Astros, or about 35 U.S. dollars. So that's pretty expensive. Another thing that you might consider if you're close and you just need rank 20 for a few minutes is going to be this Expert Shipbuilding Skills Manual. What that does is you burn it and it gives plus three to the shipbuilding skill for one hour. And that does stack with any uh, boost that you already have running. And see that there it says skill level cannot rise above 20. Okay, we have a list of aides here who give plus one shipbuilding and their requirements to do so. We have three non-NC aides, Victor, Nazario, and Chester, and it looks like Chester gets that earliest. And we also have three NC aides, Valerie, Igor, and Ming Ming, with Igor getting it the earliest there. So make sure you pick up one of those if you want to be a rank 20 shipbuilder and go ahead and get started on leveling them up. That was the last thing for me that I did to get my rank 20 shipbuilding, and it was just such a pain to try to grind that aid up. So go ahead and get started on it as soon as you can. Okay, now you've got your boost, you've got your A, you are ready to build your first ships. So um, go ahead and go to the shipyard master, not the ship right. And there are two, actually two ways to build ships. Let's click on the shipyard master. The, the main one that you're going to use while you're grinding is going to be build ship. Just plain old build ship. Uh, and once you're, when you're actually modding a ship, you're going to be using something called special ship building. The only um, exception to that is going to be when you are building a ship using a hull. Uh, like an FS build is what they call it. So um, anyway, uh, so you click build ship here. Let's talk about this kind first. And what that's going to do is it's going to bring up a list of all the ships that you can build. Okay. And you can look through here and see what kind of ships you want to build. And let's just say... Let's just say that um, I want to build a cutter. Okay, this tells me um, all the ship stats, what levels are required to use it, how many crew, how many guns, how much cargo, all that kind of stuff, and how much it's going to cost and required building days. That's going to be important here in just a second. Let's go ahead and click next. And it's going to ask us what kind of materials we want to make it out of. Okay. Um, the more expensive materials are, are up near the top. And those are generally higher durability, but they affect sales negatively. Now, something like a cedar panel down here, um, watch the durability go down and the sales will actually go up. It's a lighter material. The ship's lighter and faster, but it won't hold up quite as much in a firefight. So let's click next, say so that we're going to go ahead and do that. This screen right here will allow us to change the cargo hold of the ship. Okay, there is a select range that you can set that cargo to. Um, if you're a rank 20 shipbuilder, then you have the full maximum effective range. You have much more of a range than say a, uh, a rank 10 would have. Okay, so let's click to change that. Um, the maximum, the total maximum is going to be 300. That's as high as it's going to go. And the total lower end is going to be 180. That's as low as it's going to go. Um, but the effective range is generally where you're going to want to build that if you're building a ship for yourself. Because if you go down below this effective range into the uh, between 180 and 192 for this example, you're going to take a big penalty. So let's try, let's just see what happens when we do that. Okay. We're going to set it to 180. That's as low as it's going to go. You see this right here? It tells us that we're going to take a 25 penalty to vertical sales, 25 penalty to horizontal sales, and a minus 5 penalty to wave resistance. That really hurts the performance of the ship. Now, it does make the ship a little faster because it's a, it's a smaller ship, it's a lighter ship, so on and so forth. But... It hurts this performance so bad that if you're not planning to, to, to build mods around that, don't ever do that. 
and uh, the same holds true whenever we set it to total max. We still take a penalty, the same penalty as well. Um, you know, we might want to do that because um, we can fit more cargo on there and that kind of stuff, but still you, you generally want to make it within this effective range. And let me mention that those penalties stack too. If you set it to total max capacity and do one mod that way, and then the next mod you set it to 180 and do min, then you're going to get that penalty twice. So if you are going to take that penalty, I recommend you do it on the very last mod that you have. Okay, so let's let's set it to a reasonable. We want this to be a fast cutter. So I'm going to set it to 192 and click OK. That's going to um, set that to the lowest effective cargo that we can put. We're going to click Next. We're going to give it a name. Um, Caddy Cutter. Okay, we're going to click Complete. And that is going to build the ship. So what we have to do is we need to go out to sea for a few days, for eight days, and let that thing build. Okay? You just you don't have to sail around. You just have to sit at sea for uh, two days. And I'm going to pause. I'm going to um, just pause here and come back in in a second whenever it's time to okay, pick up. Okay, so our eight days are up and it's time to go pick up our ship. So I'm just gonna go inside and go to the harbor, go pick up my ship here from the shipyard. And um, I guess we're gonna call it a night on this one, guys. Um, I hope to, in the next video, show you guys how to do FS building, which is where you build using a hull. Um, now, uh, that's a little different than um, what we've done today, but it's a little more complex as well because you've got to add ship parts and all that kind of stuff. But hopefully this should be the basics to get you started. I'm also going to put out a video showing how to do your grind to get all the way to rank 16 base ship building. So thank you for watching. Here we go. We're going to pick up the ship. There it was. And thanks for watching. Have a good one.